South Carolina Food Regulation Act Section 34A E, South Carolina Code 1987 is amended. All the meeting and meeting area will notify the date, time, location, and agenda of the meeting. This time we have our prayer by Mr. Govan. Let's bow our heads. Father, we ask that you will give us the skills and the ability, Lord, to make decisions that are in the best interest of our children in this community. We ask, God, that you will allow us to come up with some solutions that will provide for the safety of our children as well. This we ask in your name. Amen. 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 Now stand for the pledge. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Not having one signed up for citizen comment, so we'll forego that part of the agenda. We know consent items, uh, minutes, June 13, 2022, regular meeting, June 17, 2022, board retreat, and minutes, June 30, 2022, special call meeting. Mr. Chairman, I move that we accept all three. Second. Motion second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Let's have it. Next regular Garden County Board of Edu Education meeting is scheduled for August 8, 2022 at 6 p.m. in the Board and Training Room here at the Administrative Offices. and sale of not exceeding $9,500,000 general obligation bonds, series 2022 of the school district of Darlington County, South Carolina, to prescribe the purposes for which the proceeds shall be expended, to provide for the payment thereof and other matters relating thereto. We have a second. 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 Any discussion on this? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Um, on um, to the superintendent's question, update. Question, please. Warren. Question. Excuse me. Yes. Renee, on those, we don't, not for this reading, of course, but for, we have to identify the items to be used within that 9.5? It has clause in there of what we use it for, for in, the, okay. in the resolution. I mean, it's capital projects. It, it lists, it doesn't have to list them specifically. Um, generally, when they sell a bond, they will ask for a 
some more more specific okay. list, and we usually use the capital list. We were behind we at one time, and I guess while we're on that, just curious, we pretty much resolved all those issues, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. It's been in progress. Uh, we had all kinds of issues, but yeah. because of COVID and everything else, yeah. not getting projects done, I'm sure we're giving some leeway, but I know that we were catching up. So we're clean. we got a clean slate. We're up to date with you remember even at the retreat we talked a little bit about some of the, the new projects that we were entering in over the summertime right. as well. So that's a that's the sign you're looking for. We're looking at new items and it's and don't you have a period summer. of time which you have to spend Well it's not it's, you just have to it's not not uh, legally but normally we try to keep them keep on no more than three open at a time. Okay. Yeah. That's what approaching the start of school. Um, we have principals uh, meetings this week where we'll be talking about um, you know, the start of school and what that's going to look like um, and any uh, new types of items that are going to face us as we open school. So we'll have those conversations. Um, then we'll have uh, a week next week where we kind of lock everything down. Then our teachers actually start back the week after that, which is the 25th. Um, our uh, convocation is going to be on the 26th, which is that Tuesday, uh, 9 o'clock in the morning. Um, and again, uh, as I've kind of mentioned in the past, it, we, we are going to stick to the um, method of delivering that where not everybody in the district will be in one place. Um, we haven't really had a chance to do that in a few years. So if you remember two years ago, we met in Darlington at, at Kane Elementary. And then we live streamed everywhere else and allowed um, everybody to stay at their home schools. So we're going to do that again. Uh, last year we were in Hartsville, and so the Hartsville area attended um, at the gym, uh, at the arena, and then everybody else was able to watch in their locations. This year we'll actually be in Lamar. Uh, so this will be, you know, again, we were in Darlington two years ago, Hartsville last year, we'll be in Lamar this year um, in the gymnasium for the Lamar area uh, schools, those employees will attend in the gym with us. And then we'll live stream to the uh, other schools and they'll be able to watch those in their general areas. So it tends to work out pretty good. Uh, that means people aren't having to, tra having to travel across the district. Uh, so I, me personally, I like having 1,600 of us in one space and getting a chance to interact with each other. But I just think that uh, you know that's one of the things technology is teaching us is there's there's some you know, more efficient ways of doing things, and I think um, our employees have responded pretty well to not having to drive as much too. So that's what we're planning on for convocation. Um, what day is that? The 26th, Tuesday, the 26th, um, from 9 to 11, um, and it won't be any any later than that. It could you know that, that's the plan is for two hours, but I think. Than that. Um, and then, of course, our students start with us on August 1st this year. So Monday, August 1st will be the first day of school. Um, registration, I've mentioned this as well. We, we're reopening our online registration process, um, which will be next Monday, the 18th. So we have about two-thirds of our students registered currently. Um, so we're trying to get that last third or anybody new that's moved into the area taken care of. We'll be putting out uh, phone messages, social media, emails. Our schools will be contacting their particular students that they have that they that they're showing that they have not registered. Um, and again, just as a um, as an FYI, if um, a, if a family or student is not registered by the first day of school, they cannot attend school. So uh, 
we, we do not have our schools open for registration during school hours. That'll be for after school. So anybody that's not registered um, by August 1st and preferably during this online time, uh, the 18th through the uh, 24th, um, will have to wait until after school to register. Now, when you say after school, are you referring to, at least after school, are you referring to August 2nd? Or are you August referring to after school, after school on August 1st? Yeah. Okay. yeah. What, we, what we don't want to do and, and what you know, our schools need to be teaching uh, and need to be conducting instruction um, August 1st as soon as we start. Um, and, and what we don't want is our lobby areas and offices overrun the folks that haven't done what everybody else did which is register for school. So um, it's worked out really well the past few years as far as getting people to, uh, to get registered and taken care of. We also understand you may be new to the area. You may move, you know, the week of school. We understand that. So we can accommodate that. But um, I think our schools really appreciate being able to get down to business immediately um, on that first day of school. And like I said, we've got two-thirds of our students registered already, which is a great number. So I, I think we'll, we'll get most everybody else taken care of that following week. Well, the reason I ask that is because I think it's important that we get that word out because you will have people the first day. And the, the ripple effect, effect of that is that people will call board members to ask the same <coughs> question. So I think that and since you were doing the Facebook Live, I mean, I think that some, I don't know how we do it, but I think that yeah, we need to make every effort we can to do that. Absolutely. And Mr. Govan, we've done this for the past two years. Yeah. So we, we've actually done this exact same situation the past two years uh, and made sure to message to everybody as much as, much as we can message, right, uh, to parents uh, to make sure to get their, their children uh, registered. So. Again, we'll do everything we can to let them know about it. And for the folks that don't know about it and don't get their children registered, we'll see them after school on the 1st. How, what are, how are the virtual academy numbers looking? Um, they're pretty consistent with the last year on um, the elementary and middle school, uh, which is, you know, I think the, the maximum we're allowed to put in there is 300 for grades, first grade through eighth. 270 is what you know, and I, I think we'll, we'll be holding in that 220 to 250 range at this point in time. Um, and then high school, you know, that uh, the requests that we have are similar to what we had last year. We're looking at again making sure we can cover all the classes that the students need um, and, and how we're going to do that. So we're, we're also at looking at some new ways to, to cover those classes too. So for example, we've had to pull teachers from across the district to teach during their planning times or at, that's one of their teaching times, right? So they may have you know, two in-person and, and one virtual or they may have three in-person and do a virtual on their own. We're actually, the software and technology we have now, we can take that on more ourselves and have teachers that teach the South Carolina standards do that, but we don't employ them, so they're not ours. And we're not necessarily depending on our own people to teach an extra load, just so we can cover the, the classes for the students, so. Um, let me see if there's anything else. Vacancies, we're working very hard to fill everything. Again, uh, each day uh, we're signing off more and more, so uh, I, I think that number's whittled down. Chuck, 43. 43 total, and that, that includes all different vacancies, is that correct? Mm -hmm. for, for teaching positions, that's, a, that's if, it's, if it's not a teacher in a classroom, or that's, that, that's, that's specific. Certified classroom teacher vacancies. Okay. Nine mm -hmm. of our schools are fully staffed. And so you got to think we've got 800, approximately 850, 800 to 850 teachers, and you know we're we're looking at 40. Um, and some of those, if you remember last year, we kind of had 30 to 40 vacancies all year long. 
some of them were extra positions and we were able to cover, you know, because they were, <coughs> we were able to cover those classes. <coughs> Don't anticipate any issues. We're not in any significant uh, stress in comparison to prior years. Um, we have plans for any classroom to have a certified person at the start of the school year. So, uh, feel good about that. Um, I will once again thank the board for your efforts with the budget um, to allow our teachers their raise and to allow all of our other employees their raise. Um, I've gotten a lot of positive feedback um, since the last meeting um, and, and, and people saying thank you. And, and so you need to hear that too. Uh, I, I know you, got, you get lots of emails when folks aren't quite so happy, but um, you need to know when people are appreciative. And I've, I've had a lot of positive response and a lot of people saying, that reflects in this July the 15th check? Um, for uh, year-round employees, it will, but not for regular 190. So the, basically school personnel like teachers and teaching aides, bus drivers, those types of folks, that won't take place until they come back. But for year-round employees like custodians that are year-round currently or um, uh, book, bookkeep, not uh, secretaries that are working, <coughs> maintenance workers, uh, office workers up here, it will go into effect on the 15th. Oh, good way. Um, and that's, you know, again, that's the superintendent's report. We're just planning and getting ready, and um, it's coming quickly. You know, this has been a I'm, I'm glad we got out early because we're coming back early. So, but I, I think we'll all uh, be grateful by the time October rolls around. We we'll see some time there in February as well. So we're looking forward. To that. That's everything I have for the okay, question. Anyone? Okay, we'll move on to board member input. Mr. Morris. I don't want to cause any work additional work, but if it's easy to retrieve over the next month or so, just curious if we could get the number of students enrolled for the five-year trailing to the current year, and then when we started virtual, the same for those, what, which are virtual and which are in-person. And then likewise with employees, total number of employees, and do you break it down or can you easily, don't do a bunch of work, but if it's easy to break down between administrative and classroom, say administrative, administrative and ancillary, other, if that makes sense. Yeah, and, and so, you know, just, and we probably need to do it by fund, too, because, you know, we're using ESSER funds to pay for a lot of positions right now that are, temp, you know, what we call short-term positions, uh, like uh, part-time uh, teaching assistants. Uh, so we, you know, should be able to get it by fund as well, to kind of give you an idea of what that and, is. And while you mentioned that, how have y'all been or able to find, you know, again, they give us this money and they give us a time period to spend it, and it's so difficult to put the programs in place because we couldn't get the personnel in place, and we talked about going to get retirees, going to do this. How has that been? Have we been able to find people to do the reading recovery or doing all the remediation that needs to be done or still needs to be done, but how did that go? I, mean, I hate to say we haven't got much to report on so uh, we, we've actually got data to show, you know, kids that were involved with reading recovery and reading interventions, for example. So if an interventionist touched a student or if a reading recovery teacher touched a student, we've been able to follow them and get their data so we can, you know, my, my plan is when we, when we do the, the, the normal annual data presentation of SC Ready, when those scores are not embargoed anymore, we present those scores. We can talk also about the students that have been touched by some of these other programs that are <coughs> auxiliary programs, right, from the ESSER lines. Um, but to your to your question about how we, how we've been able to fill positions, it's been hit or miss. One time we talked about giving stipends to someone who wanted to work over overtime, additional time, yep. and how could we do it? Could yep. we do it? What are some creative ways of? Yep giving our own people opportunities, yet accomplishing our goal of being able to tend to those people. Say, so, okay, I got a class at 3.30, uh, I'll offer this from four to six, whatever whatever could be done to 
bridge that gap, and I know we, we couldn't find the people, it was going to be difficult. Uh, so anyway, I just didn't know yeah, what. So it, it, you know, to your point, um, and, and I think you know, everybody felt in this past year, um, you know, it was tough getting people to work the after school programs, uh, and, and it wasn't for lack of money. You know, it's you know, some folks just said, look, I, I, it's not the money. I just can't no do it. All right, I can't do it. I'm, I'm you know, working as much as I can just to take care of the kids during the day. Um, that eased up better for us as the spring wore on and we weren't dealing as much with you know, the health piece and people being out. Uh, so that eased up. But I can tell you, like there were some schools that they had every one of their part-time um, folks that were hired, because you know, we had a lot, we hired a lot of part-time TAs to assist with the small group instruction. So some of our schools, they were able to hire everyone that they were allocated. Some of our schools maybe only had 25% of those folks, so um, it just it was hit or miss depending on the school in the area. But um, you know, I, I think what we're finding in you know Renee's group and I, we, we talk about this all the time. That that ESSER, it, it's kind of a moving target now because of what you've described. Because if you know you plan and you budget to spend this amount of money, well, if you don't, you know, use it. Like you, right. Well, now you've got you've still got that money. So what you know? What's the next steps with that? What you know? How are we planning for that? So um, I'll be uh, curious to see how at the national level. You know, they've kind of backed off some of the timelines already on some of the ESSER money pots. I would not be surprised because of what we've just been talking about. Every district across the country is talking about. I would not be surprised to see a timeline back off as well as that because again we've had discussions at this table it, I could probably make it last 10 years I could have a plan in place to make sure that we utilize that money for the next 10 years um, in an efficient way you know so uh, because we know again we're not able to expend it the exact way that we said it so, so what is the process for funneling information to those authorities that make the decisions on that. I mean, if it's a federal funding, so what is the process to get to the state and then the state to the federal to understand the dilemma that not only us, but all, we said this at the beginning, at the onset, when they put those constraints on it, we can't get our teachers in the classroom, we can't get enough teachers for regular classroom, much less what it's going to take to put in the programs for remediation. So have we, have we been funneling it? Or is there someone, I mean, is there an organization? Is there a group? Or, I mean, uh, I'm, I'm asking. I mean, we say we talk about it, we beat it around, but there's got to be some way of communicating. You know, we bring this up. Uh, superintendents bring this up at the state level, you know, on a monthly basis. So we we talk the state education department, and they tell us, you know, it's pretty much a, a federal decision. You know, that, that it's pretty much out of their hands. Um, but they've got to be the lobbyists to go. I mean, you follow me? I, I would assume. Absolutely, absolutely. So then, then, it, then you talk about, you know, our legislature talk about folks that have voices in Washington that potentially are in our state that could carry that message. So, you know, the, the, the key, it, 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 with anything that is done at the federal level, um, it, it's a hard wall to climb, but it can still be climbed. All right, so I'll, I'll close that set of questions a second with when we, and if we ever do our the legislative gathering again, could we consider bringing in federal boards. I mean, why are they, I mean, again, there's only so much we can do at state level, okay? We beat it, we're dictated to, so if we want someone to listen to us, especially now when the federal funds are such a large portion of what we're doing and guiding and directing, they need to hear how they're really being used and the dilemma that we're having, the problem we're having, we're able to use that if someone's going to get back. I mean, we can't just sit and talk about it in circles among ourselves and nothing's really being done. Where are they getting their information to go back and make these decisions? So just put it in your hat. If we ever get together again, uh, we need to ask those guys yeah. to come. I mean, our entire state. I agree. Um, um, so, I agree. Last one. Yeah. I'll quit. <laughs> so, we're getting ready to start back school. As you say, it sure did go quick. With health, we know there's a bunch of COVID going around. It seems to be treated differently than what it has been in the past. Obviously, we've learned, we've done. It becomes it's almost becoming a part of our everyday. I mean, we had a ton in our workforce and how it's treated. So are we already having conversations now about 
when we go in, how do we, we, we might as well go and start talking about it because it will be here and there will be cases there every day. I mean, we, again, we had four on our floor, we had 12 in our building. I mean, so, but they are six, six. No one's been talked about it. It's just something that happens. But what are we going to do at the school level? What's, what is the state talking about? What's the protocol with the new whatever? Right. Whatever the new is, right? right. And there will be a new. It is a new. It, it is a different strain every time we talk about the booster shots. Now they're saying that the booster shots don't last 30 days. They're talking about if we get it, doesn't. There's all kind of crazy new stuff. But no one's been compiling. We just don't talk about it, which I'm fine with. Don't get me wrong. But we're going to have to discuss it. We're going to have to decide on a game plan for us and everybody else um, how we want to treat things. Yeah, and, and Jamie, it's interesting. We were having this conversation this morning, you know, because we we've, we've got to talk to our principals about it. And if you if you've noticed, you're not hearing a lot. And it's not who's a contact. It's not this. It's not well, we're out five days, ten days, students, no. the whole class. None of that's no. going on at the workplace. No. Um, and everybody's doing fine. Yeah. Um, so you know if if you if you take the lead from where we ended the school year and and what's kind of transpired over the summertime as well, that um, it's going back to if you're sick, you stay home. Like you would in any, any other situation. You need to stay home. Not the end of story. Yeah. That, that's pretty much yeah. where we're at at this point in time. Are we still now, offering the testing out here? We are. We are. So we'll continue to do that? As long as it's, we're not having to pay for it. So, okay. you know, as long as we're not having to pay for it. Is anybody yeah. using it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you'd be surprised over the past couple of weeks. Uh, it's kind of picked up a little bit. So, um, so I mean, how? I've actually used it a couple times just to make sure. If, you know, just for fun, you miss it. Not just okay. for fun, but just to make sure if I'm going to be around some folks that I'm worried about. Uh, I don't want to get anybody sick. But, he ain't uh, worried about us. Yeah. He <laughs> but, uh, He'd like to get rid of a few of us. <laughs> but, yeah. it, uh, you know, again, you're just not hearing a collective conversation about this. And so what you are hearing is if you test positive, um, it, that you need to stay home, you know, from the time you had symptoms or from the time you had, you tested positive, you need to stay home for five days. That's what the medical profession is telling everybody. Um, and then you can come back, uh, you know, with a mask for the next five days. That's what the, the medical same. professionals are, are recommending, right? But, you know, I, I think, to your point, we're not hearing about as much severe illness at all. Uh, it, in fact, a lot of the people I'm talking to that are testing positive, you know, they don't have any significant symptoms. They're finding it out, you know, because they go in to have a test done, you know, for something else and they test positive. Um, doesn't mean it's gone away. And it doesn't mean that people aren't, you know, getting sick. Because I know some other folks that, that said, hey, I, I wasn't expecting much. And, you know. But, you know, we had the thing about one boot, regular shot, one booster, two boosters, four yeah. boosters. But no one's, do, there's no protocol because boosters are so worn out and gone. When's the last time? So do I start over from scratch? There's, there's no, no recommendations. Protocol? Yeah, there's okay. no recommendations. So, so I don't want to start something. I'm just right. saying we just need to think of those well, issues. Well, yeah, I about. think the big change that we all realized this past spring was once we got away from close contacts, you know, that, that everything kind of eased out uh, for us. And so... When you're not having to, you know, follow up and talk to everybody that people have been around, which, you know, those that's not what's being recommended anymore. Yes. So, whether it be from uh, DHEC or whether it be from physicians or anybody else, it's going back to, you know, if you if you're sick, you need to stay home. If you test positive, you need to stay home for five days from the time you had symptoms, or from the time you tested, um, and then come back to school come back to work and so I, I don't think what one of the things we were talking about earlier uh, today was when we get to the point where it's not five days anymore I think that's when you'll really see things we won't be having a whole lot of conversations about it um, but when we're when, when the medical professions are, uh, professionals are still saying you should quarantine for five days you know that's what we have to go by <clears throat> so but, but just, just talk it's a, game plan because it's a fair question because forward. when's the last time we've really talked about it, right? And so here we are about ready to start school again. But I, I think we're all wanting to be as realistic about what we're dealing with 
Uh, we want everybody to be safe, but at the same time, we also recognize we got to conduct school. We got to have our kids in school, um, and we got to have our staff with us too. So, so if they have it now, are they paying on the medical leave now? It is still we still have uh, still a COVID work. leave policy okay. in place. Uh, and like I said, I, I think when they start to change that five-day piece, then all of a sudden I think we can have some other conversations about that. But, but you know, one of the things is if, if, if the medical professional is saying you have to stay out of work, you know, think about that in comparison to some of the other types of illnesses. If I had a cold in the past and I felt good enough to be at work, I just stayed at work. Um, and, you know, you don't have that option now. You don't have that option now, right? <laughs> so it's still, if your medical pro professional says you can't be at work or you can't be at whatever, uh, I think until we get some leniency for that, we, we still have to keep working through it. But. So that's the only CDC or DHEC kind of governance that's on us for this starting school year right now is the five day At this point testing. in time. So if nothing with family members, cousins, brothers, aunts, uncles, whatever. It's just you and then Monica. It's just you. So. It's good. I mean, it's, it's work good. Everybody seems to be. Well, and I think you know the medical professionals will tell you. Um, you know, you've got one you're pretty close to. That I think we're now on version four or five. And each you know version is less and less you know of an impact medically. So. Um, you know, I, I, I think what we're seeing is the more and more it's out there, the more and more people aren't affected by it as negatively, certainly, as we dealt with uh, the past couple of years. So, listen, we, we want to keep our kids safe. We want to keep our staff safe. We want to conduct school. We just got to find that road down the middle of it to where we keep everybody in and take care of them. So. Okay. There you go, Good. Okay. Um, Doing two things. The back to school events that are typically held during the school um, beginning of school, there will be one on July the 30th at Prime Hawk. That one's going to be in the morning. I think it's 10 to 12. And the other is July the 28th, and that's going to be at Hartsville High School on the back side as it did last year um, on the Washington Street side. And it's three, I think, three to five or three to six. Um, and it will be a drive through, so you'll just drive through, pick your bags up, pick whatever they're going to give out, and keep it rolling. Okay. That's it. Good. Richard? I'd just like to thank all our <coughs> teachers and employees for a great year this past year, and let's all look forward to a new year and new opportunities. Yeah. Good. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we've already heard about vaccines, so I don't have to ask about those. <laughs> 43, right? <laughs> so hopefully by next meeting we'll have three. <laughs> you said it. You heard from me. He said, you said it. You said it. He, he said, said zero. He said zero. Zero. Yep. Sounds good to me. He's going to be Florence County said they had zero, right? <laughs> <laughs>
congratulations to them for meeting all their all their goals so far. And I'm sure there's some others too. There is no secret about that one. So yeah. we are making progress, people. But we are making progress. It's not where we want to be by any means, but uh, we have made some progress and uh, our teachers can be commended for that. Uh, they, they're working hard, I'm telling you. They really do. And they probably don't get it. They don't get enough credit, I, I can assure you. Uh, and we do appreciate every one of you and uh, looking forward to another you know, good year this year. All right? Absolutely. And you get to start back early, so you by 25th, so uh, you get an opportunity sooner than later. All right, we move on. Didn't have to handle that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they won't like that. Uh, personnel actions. I move we accept the recommendation of personnel for the uh, administration. I'll second. Administration is safe. Discussion. I would favor the motion to accept the uh, personnel actions. I propose, I just have it. The executive session. I <coughs> have a motion for that. I will be going to executive session to discuss personnel and any contractual matters. I'll second. Second. Okay. I would favor that motion. Aye. Aye. We're now going to executive session. Take any motions, Mr. Chairman. I move that we accept the recommendation of, of the administration for the hiring of a principal at DCIS. Second. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none. All in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. I move to adjourn. The motion adjourned. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Stand adjourned. Thank you.